What's going on, Jets fans? Appreciate you stopping in. So I've been fairly critical of this young Jets coaching staff, 20 games in to their regime, and I'm not taking anything back. Those concerns to me are still valid, but sometimes it's hard for me to tell, and maybe it is for you sometimes too, to what extent we allow the Jets trauma that we all have to blur the vision of men who have nothing to do with those scars. Hard to say sometimes. So in this video, I'm going to try and take the stance, if I were the agent of the Jets coaching staff and I were trying to sell what they've accomplished so far, what would I say? What are some small victories I could point to? Well, I came up with five plus one bonus one, and let's get it going right now. Number one, it's really just how the Jets brass in general is structured. I think there's harmony, there's symbiosis from GM to head coach, coordinator, defensive coordinator, all throughout the assistant coaches. There's a shared vision, right, of how to build and sustain a winning football team. Is it the right vision? We'll see. But we've seen hot messes before where the GM comes in after the coach or vice versa. They're not each other's pick. Now the quarterback isn't, is the GM's guy, but not the coach's guy. The GM doesn't want the scouts talking to the coaches. Crazy. Can't win that way. You need a clear chain of command and everyone has to be on the same page to some extent. And these men are. Uh, furthermore, I like Robert Sala's CEO approach at head coach. Uh, sometimes if you're too detail oriented or too committed to one side of the football, sometimes you can't see the forest through the trees. And I like that Robert Sala uh, is our head coach. I think that kind of allows you to really assess the game uh, from a, a bird's eye view and should allow for better game management, situational management, things like that. I also like that there's some built-in humility in Robert Sala's willingness to delegate and trust the men who work beneath him. I like that. So that's number one. Now, number two, I fully believe that Robert Sala and this entire Jets coaching staff, they're trying to establish a culture and an identity of what it means to play like a Jet. Now, I have serious questions about the implementation of that culture, right? And the tactics to get there. But our last two coaches made no attempt to build an identity or a culture at all. And that matters. We've all had jobs where the culture was so toxic. It didn't matter how talented the employees were. We weren't going anywhere. So the slogans and the t-shirts, I know sometimes it's kind of cringe, but if you go out there and you win games, I do believe having mantras and mission statements are important. I do. Whether they're the right messages, I don't know, but you got to try and build a culture and they're trying to do that. And they're bringing in the kind of leaders and, and men to help do that. They are undeniably. That's what they're trying to do. Now, number three, um, special teams. I have complained for the past four or five seasons. Ever since we let go of a Pro Bowl kicker and a Pro Bowl punt returner we had in the same season, we have been scrambling in a bad special teams unit. And you know, for better or for worse, I know we want Mims to be active. I know a lot of us wanted Gidry over Hardy, but I can't have it both ways. I can't complain about a lackluster special teams unit, but then also complain when the Jets designate a couple of roster spots for special teams guys. And the Jets, out of all three of their units, Offense, defense, and specials. The special teams is playing by far the best. They're like a top 10 special teams unit in the NFL so far. Zerloin is the most professional level kicker we've had in a few years. Braden Mann has now had the back-to-back -back two best games of his Jets career. And Braxton Berrios, we know, is excellent in the return game. So they went and they got us a special teams after it had been ignored for the... Uh, entirety of the last regime and the end of the regime before that one. Number four, they went out there and they improved the biggest area of weakness on this football team, which in my opinion, 2021, the biggest weakness was the ability to stop the run. And all of a sudden the jets can stop the run. 
Now, Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens, one of the top five rushing teams from last year, the Jets stymie them completely. Uh, Cleveland, Chubb and Hunt do that to just about everybody, and then they shut down Joe Mixon. And statistically, it is night and day last year with this run defense. And that was one of the areas that we all kind of thought was still going to be an issue. And so far, it's been relatively fixed. Credit where credit is due. Fixing an area of weakness. Number five. I was combing through our depth chart and I was like thinking, what position group can we point to where I'm like, they coach those guys up? And it was pretty easy for me. I think it's been our cornerbacks. Last year, when we rolled into that season, I was like looking at our cornerback room and I was like, oh my God, our cornerback room is going to be the worst in the NFL. You know, Bryce Hall, was he a corner three? Brandon Eccles, you got all these late fifth, Isaiah Dunn, Michael Carter, just a bunch of mid and late round picks, all rookies and second year players. And then some injuries on top of that, of course. And honestly, <clears throat> the Jets defense had a lot of problems last year. Uh, but those young corners weren't at the top of the list. They outperformed. They held their own. They got better as the season went on. Now, Brandon Eccles, he looks better. Michael Carter, he looks better in year two. Bryce Hall, we're not sure what's going on there. Um, and then Sauce Gardner. You know, Sauce is Sauce, and obviously he's incredibly talented. But I can't have a rookie step in and look like a pro bowler right away and give no credit to the men coaching him. It just doesn't make sense. So, to me, those young Defensive backs have been coached up well, objectively. Objectively, that's been a win for the Jets coaching staff. And finally, uh, the bonus one. One of the biggest criticisms has been the supposed lack of accountability or adaptability. I've said those things. There's been instances where I think that's been true. And I tried to find a couple of instances throughout the early parts of this year where they've corrected that and i did find a few remember the first game of the season they come out offensively they have a huge role for lawrence cager right 13 personnel and they're featuring cager he makes the team <clears throat> they playing two-thirds of the snaps in the first half against baltimore it's not working he's not playing well he's committing penalties he's falling down leading to interceptions michael floor scraps it Second half, all 11 personnel, Garrett Wilson on the field making plays. They never look back. Garrett Wilson then featured as the number one wide receiver the next week. Next week, Lawrence Cager doesn't even dress. Bryce Hall struggles week one, doesn't even dress. They replace him with Brandon Eccles. They haven't looked back. Now, there's some other players I'd like to give them that same Lawrence Cager treatment to. We're looking at you, LaMarcus Joyner. But that is clear as day, accountability adaptability right there speaking of adaptability I mean, Mike LaFleur last year it, with the the smoke and mirrors that he ran on offense there was chunks of time where it was double reverses and jet sweeps and flea flickers and a running back pass and I think there was again built in humility in saying we can't beat the other team straight up we're gonna have to steal some points uh, I like to see him bring some of that magic back to this year's team We'll see what happens when Zach Wilson gets back. So that's it for me. I think that this Jets coaching staff, there are some things you can point to even when we're frustrated. And uh, Zach Wilson coming out and playing like a franchise quarterback is just going to make everyone's job a little easier. And we'll talk ball soon.